good morning to all uh, thank you very much uh, to organization for giving this opportunity to present my work so today i am going to uh, discuss about um, order pt3m intermetallic nano crystals synthesis and electrocatalysis so overview of my talk so i will be introducing fuel cells and i will be talking about four different intermetallic nanoparticles based on led block metals like pt3 niobium and uh, pt3 tantalum and uh, pt3 zirconium and uh, pt3 titanium so nowadays we are uh, talking about energy uh, because it is expected that uh, by 2050 global energy demand is going to rise uh, by two to three times and it leads to energy crisis all over the world so that's why scientists started thinking about alternative to uh, alternative for this fuel cell uh, fossil fuels so in this one of the um, promising candidates fuel cells which provides non-polluting power sources okay and produce no noise and has no moving parts so i will be discussing about fuel cell the basic mechanism what is a fuel cell fuel cell is an energy converting device which converts chemical energy to electrical energy so what are the reactions involved in this fuel cell so here anode and cathode so at anode the fuel at anode uh, side the fuel hydrogen will be oxidized and forms h plus and four, four electron uh, forms h plus and electrons and the cathode side oxygen will be reduced to h2o so this is um schematic diagram and uh, how the fuel cell wor uh, works so here you can see the hydrogen enters here and the anode side it will be oxidized the formed h plus ions moves through the proton exchange membrane uh, to cathode side from the cathode side oxygen so oxygen uh, will be reduced to water so the byproduct is water here and the formed electrons that is passes through the external circuits that means it produces uh, electricity this is the basic mechanism of uh, uh, fuel cells uh, so as we know hydrogen production storage and uh, transportation is very difficult so that's why people started uh, thinking about the alternative fuels other than hydrogen so they came uh, across two important fuels like uh, alcohols and uh, acids among this uh, alcohols and acids alcohols are promising because uh, it is uh, easy to transport and it is a stable liquid at all environmental conditions and uh, another important uh, thing is uh, it operates at lower temperatures so among we have a lot of alcohols like ethanol methanol all those things among uh, all the alcohols so ethanol is considered to be a hydrogen rich uh, liquid because it's a high energy density around 8 kilo uh, watt hour per kg compared to toxic methanol so we are basically concentrating on ethanol uh, fuel cell what are the reactions involved so another important point is ethanol can be produced in a great quantity from biomass through a fermentation process so this is a natural process so we can produce ethanol in a great quantity okay uh, and uh, the reactions is at anode side and the cathode side are shown here so uh, ethyl alcohol will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and oxygen will be uh, reduce, uh, reducing to water this is the net um, reaction so here what are the main disadvantages uh, disadvantages of uh, using alcohol the main uh, disadvantages is uh, the complete oxidation so complete oxidation is the main disadvantages because if ethanol is not complete oxidized it produces co and this co will basically contaminate uh, contaminate or poison uh, the platinum uh, catalyst so the activity uh, will be decreased and the stability will be decreased so what are the research so far has happened for this fuel cells mainly uh, focus on uh, focus on platinum uh, group metals because uh, these group metals are highly active um, so platinum met, uh, platinum alone and platinum alloyed are intermetallic with lead d metals like iron cobalt nickel and copper zinc these combinations um, showed higher activity and uh, it always suffers uh, from the stability because uh, the enthalpy of formation is very less that means in a repeated electrochemical cycles uh, it will be leached okay the, then the stability won't be there after a few cycles uh, the activity and the stability will degrade so that's why alternatively we are looking basically the uh, intermetallic nanoparticles of platinum with early d block metals why it is important here uh, the enthalpy of formation is very high the enthalpy formation of uh, very high the first point and the second point it is very difficult uh, it is 
it is very uh, difficult to synthesize because uh, these metals are oxophilic metals so throughout the synthesis we need to uh, maintain very strict organic uh, argon conditions that means that everything should be happen uh, under argon atmosphere otherwise the oxides will forms like TiO2 vanadium oxide like that so we have synthesized um, platinum 3 niobium okay by taking platinum precursor uh, ptcod cl2 and uh, niobium chloride nb2 uh, cl10 uh, in a diglen diglen this is a dry diglen uh, and we used the reduction uh, we used uh, superhydrate as a reducing agent um, and it forms basically um, and platinum niobium alloy nanoparticles initially and after annealing under hydrogen around 100 degrees uh, sorry 1000 degrees it forms pt3 niobium intermetallic nanoparticles so this is uh, confirmed by the xrd so here you can see the red profile basically uh, annealed at 500 degrees uh, it is showing the perfect fcc structure that is similar to platinum uh, crystal structure and when it goes to 600 degrees then we can see small humps here that is representing the formation of uh, intermetallic um, peaks and uh, it fully converted to intermetallic when we annealed um, at 1000 degrees centigrade so this uh, formation from alloy to intermetallic nanoparticle further confirmed by using hxps hard x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy we have done in synchrotron uh, radiation by using synchrotron radiation so here uh, we can see for platinum and uh, niobium so we also synthesized platinum 3 niobium bulk by using arc method um, and we also uh, we compared this bulk with pt3 niobium nanoparticle uh, intermetallic nanoparticles and both the peak position are same and this is this confirmed the formation of pt3 niobium um, intermetallic nanoparticles in the same case we also compared for niobium also so niobium it is around 2 uh, 2.5 and uh, here intermetallic has shifted the peak it represent the formation of basically the mixing of ni niobium uh, and uh, platinum okay so after this we did the um, microscopic study that means uh, uh, by using uh, uh, PEM uh, for a 500 degrees annual sample and 1000 degrees annual sample and 500 degrees sample the particle sizes are very small around 10 nanometers or uh, less than that and uh, this is the high resolution HRTEM image of this one HRTEM image and uh, the corresponding FFT fast Fourier transformation so this confirms uh, the crystal structure is in FCC okay uh, this uh, crystal structure is in FCC that means cubic uh, crystal structure and uh, for uh, 1000 degrees centigrade we can clearly see here the particles are sintered the particle size become bigger and it is almost 100 to 200 nanometers in between and um, dark field uh, STM uh, we can see the order structure of uh, order structure of platinum and niobium you can see clearly in this image um, and the corresponding FFT exactly fit to the intermetallic crystal uh, crystal structure of pt3 uh, niobium uh, so this is this confirms the formation of pt3 niobium intermetallic nanoparticles and also we did the edx mapping that means for platinum and for niobium so we can clearly see what are the particles are uh, there so platinum and niobium both the elements uniformly distributed and the ratio is platinum niobium atomic ratio is around 3.3 is to 1 uh, which is a pt3 niobium so after confirming the formation of uh, formation of this uh, uh, intermetallics, we have conducted electro, uh, ethanol electro-oxidation studies in 0.5 molar H2SO4 in 1 molar uh, ethyl uh, alcohol. Uh, so this one, the first figure uh, clearly uh, shows the difference between platinum, that is the black profile, and platinum alloy, uh, this one, and the green one is basically PT3 niobium intermetallic nanoparticles. The, you can see the clearly it is highly active as compared to platinum and uh, platinum niobium alloy. And the uh, 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 and also the initial uh, potential also uh, very very less that means it is very highly active and we can see the bar chart here the specific capacities comparison between platinum and the pt3 niobium and nanoparticles it is almost three times uh, more active than um, platinum and uh, it's a uh, corresponding alloy, pl pl platinum niobium alloys so the enhanced um, activity uh, we did some um, theoretical calculation and we concluded that the the enhanced activity uh, due to because of the lowering the d band center so for platinum uh, nanoparticles the d band center around minus 3.3 uh, uh, whereas platinum niobium the d band center is minus 3.7 electron volt uh, so what uh, by lowering the d band center the bond between what are the intermediate forms that is a co molecule the bond between platinum niobium intermetallics is weaker 
so you can see here dotted line so it is weaker compared to the platinum so because of this uh, low poisoning uh, nature so it is showing high activity and uh, also high uh, catalytic activity so this is about platinum niobium intermetallic in the same way we also uh, synthesized platinum tantalum uh, uh, nanoparticles in the same way like platinum precursor and tantalum precursor we took in the diagram uh, uh, dry diagram we took and uh, we uh, used super hydrate as a reducing agent and uh, we annealed uh, we washed and we annealed the uh, sample uh, for up to 600 and up to 1000 um, so 1000 degrees annealed sample shows a perfect intermetallic structure of a pt3 niobium these are all the alloy and uh, this is this is the platinum pt3 uh, tantalum uh, crystal structure so this is further confirmed by the uh, uh, xps hxps data this one and also confirmed by the t microscopic studies the uh, ordering of platinum niobium here and its fft is exactly matching and also the platinum and uh, tantalum uniformly distributed throughout the particles it shows the pt3 uh, nio, uh, pt3 tantalum nanoparticles has formed uh, and it is homogeneously distributed uh, platinum and tantalum so the, from this we concluded the formation of pt3 tantalum so we further uh, evaluated the electrochemical um, uh, um, electrochemical uh, oxidation of uh, ethanol so in this case we compared the activity with the commercial pt3 tin okay pt3 uh, tin uh, ca um, carbon which is a commercial uh, and uh, best known uh, catalyst for ethanol electro oxidation so we compare the both activities you can see the bar chart here the pt3 tantalum is highly active compared to platinum and pt3 tin and uh, we also check the stability so after 10000 uh, cycle still the uh, pt3 ta has 90% uh, um, up to 90% activity whereas the platinum nanoparticles has the activity below 50% and finally what we have done we used this platinum uh, synthesized plat uh, platinum 3 uh, tantalum intermetallics uh, for real uh, fuel cells and uh, in that study also we compared the activity with the platinum and uh, pt3 ta and the power density and uh, current density both are showing uh, very uh, high compared to uh, platinum nanoparticles and we also uh, here i am not showing but we also confirm uh, confirm the cc bond breakage in uh, ethanol by using in situ ir studies uh, so pt3 ta um, pt3 uh, ta intermetallic nanoparticles uh, efficiently break this cc bond that means uh, so the byproduct should be co2 so this is what and this is the main uh, advantage of the pt3 ta intermetallic nanoparticles okay further uh, moving to another intermetallic that is pt3 zirconium um, so in this what we have el el elucidated that bulk structure uh, has we tuned the bulk structure uh, between cubic and hexagonal so the synthesis condition is same uh, here we took uh, zirconium precursor and platinum precursor uh, same in diagram and superhydrate is the reducing agent after that what we observed when we heat uh, under vacuum uh, heat this compound under vacuum at 900 degrees we observed this this is cubic okay uh, this is uh, cubic in uh, cubic crystal structure and the same nanoparticles uh, we raise the temperature to 1000 degrees then this cubic uh, structure crystal structure as uh, converted to hexagonal and we uh, clearly uh, got the information by seeing the xrd you can see here the blue profile that is a cubic pt3 zirconium and uh, hexagonal pt3 zirconium both are having completely different crystal structure and also we observed the same trend in uh, hxps data this is the hxps um data so here cubic and uh, this is the hexagonal and we also prepared the bulk one and bulk one basically hexagonal and it is matching with the hexagonal uh, pt3 zirconium intermetallic nanoparticles and it is uh, basically little higher compared to cubic one so um, from xrd and uh, from the xps we concluded that both the for, uh, both the uh, crystal structure like uh, with cubic and with hexagon, uh, hexagonal so we synthesized pt3 zirconium nanoparticles this is further we did the microscopic analysis and uh, here we can see this is for cubic pt3 zirconium and this is for uh, uh, hexagonal zirconium and uh, the we can see high resolution images the atomic ordering okay uh, atomic order of platinum and zirconium and the crystal structure with uh, zone axis 101 here and uh, 11 here uh, so it is exactly fitting the uh, crystal structure of cubic 
here in this case and the hexagonal in this case so we uh, successfully synthesized two um, crystal structures basically cubic and hexagonal of pt3 zirconium um, so we after that we uh, did the whether um, this crystal structure has any effect on the electro, uh, electrocatalytic properties so interestingly we found cubic uh, pt3 zirconium is almost equal to um, platinum c whereas hexagonal uh, pt3 zirconium has showed very high activity you can see the activity is almost uh, double compared to platinum or cubic one so the hexagonal zirconium uh, showed uh, zirconium pt3 showed higher activity compared to other than two and uh, also the uh, um, the long term uh, stability up to 200 cycles we checked uh, so the stability also high and also the co tolerant also is high for hexagonal so we did some um, um, theoretical studies that concluded that this the activity change due to because of the surface energy we can uh, we calculated the surface and uh, uh, surface energies of uh, cubic and um, hexagonal so cubic has a less surface energy compared to hexagonal so as we know uh, all so high surface energy surfaces okay has a higher activity so uh, and lower surface energy has a lower activity so so here uh, hexagonal zirconium platinum has showed highest activity uh, because of uh, its uh, high surface energy so coming to the last point last uh, slide of my talk that is pt3 uh, uh, titanium um, nanoparticles uh, so this is basically uh, synthesized in the same way like pt3 uh, pt and titanium and uh, with systematically uh, done uh, this study uh, done systematically like uh, different different temperatures how the uh, this intermetallic this forms at what um, at what temperature and uh, also showed the higher activity for methanol electro oxidation and also showed uh, it is more tolerant to co okay so uh, in conclusion um, what we have uh, i presented is pt3 niobium uh, pt3 tantalum pt3 zircon pt3 titanium intermetallic synthesis and its characterization by using xrd hxps and tm and we also uh, compared the uh, we also uh, discussed the electrocatalytic activity and stability of the synthesized intermetallic nanoparticles in the, so what are the future uh, of this um, uh, nanoparticles or basically whatever we synthesized that is um, the particle sizes are very big so the main uh, so our next target is to make this nanoparticles in smaller size uh, less than 10 nanometer uh, 10 nanometers and uh, the specific activity is already showing more active uh, high activity but we are now concentrating the mass activity of this intermetallics okay thank you